Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're gonna talk about something that I've been seeing in a lot of Facebook and Reddit communities, and that's talking about cereal compression. Cereal compression isn't mushing down on your favorite breakfast cereal, but it's actually stacking compressors to go in a series to do a certain amount of dB reduction per compressor, opposed to using just one compressor and kind of pushing it a little bit harder. There's pros and cons to using compressors in serial or with just one compressor and making it work a little harder. There's also parallel compression, which we've talked about before, and I have other videos explaining how to set that up. But that's just compressing with a duplicate track and doing a lot of hard processing on that one and leaving the main track kind of normal. We're talking about serial compressing this time, so let's dive into the DAW and take a look at how to set it up. So here we are in the session, and what we're gonna be concentrating on are these vocal channels right here. On this lead vocal, I actually have already gone ahead and put a pro EQ first in line, and I was just getting rid of some stuff that I didn't like. I followed that up with an instance of the fat channel set to the tube comp mode, and not just this stock compressor. I followed it again with the fat comp, and that's this one here. Both of these plugins are the same channel. It's not like two different plugins on two different channels. And if you didn't already know, the way that I'm looking at both of these plugins is with this little blue thumbtack in the top right of the plugin window right here. So what kind of sound do you get if you have one compressor versus if you stack your compressors in series like we have here? Well, right now I have these two compressors in series. But what we're gonna do is we'll turn both of these off and we'll just throw the stock compressor on and get some settings. So here we go, Pro EQ is still on. We've turned off both instances of the fat channel, and now we're just using the stock compressor. Let's see what we can do to these lead vocals real quick and get some pretty basic settings. So here we go. We have some pretty quick settings on this compressor right here. And right now we only have the one going. You could see that at one point, I had 10 dB of gain reduction that I, I thought made this vocal sound pretty good. But that's making this one compressor sort of work a little hard. To really even this vocal out, I needed to push the compressor a little bit harder. And maybe that's not the sound you're going for. So let's go back. We'll turn this one off and we'll bring up our instances of the fat channel and turn these guys on. Remember, I have the tube comp before the FET comp. So let's start with just one. We'll take the FET comp out and just use the tube comp. During those two lines, you could see that the tube comp was doing a little bit of work, but it wasn't really slammed. It wasn't also just kissing the needle either. It was kind of a nice in-between. But there were some like really sharp transients that were coming through from his vocal performance that maybe you want to tame as well. So that's why we have the FET comp behind it. The FET comp is a very fast acting compressor. This is based on an 1176 and they're really fast. Where the tube comp is based on something like an LA-2A and those are generally a lot slower. Those are meant to kind of smooth out the, the sound as a whole and the FET comp or the 1176 style compressor is really meant to tame those transients. Let's put these on in series and see what it does. During that pass, you were probably able to see that the tube comp was doing the same amount of compression that we did before because the tube comp is first. But afterwards, the FET comp was catching some of those transients and just squeezing them down a little bit after they already came out of the tube comp because the tube comp isn't fast enough to get those transients. What you could also do is actually take your FET comp and put it before your tube comp. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but I just dragged the compressor to the different spot in my chain. And so now the FET comp is first and the tube comp is second. Let's take a listen to it now and see how it changes how each of these compressors react. It 
changes the tonality a little bit, and it makes the compressors react in a different way. You saw on this pass that the FET comp actually did a little bit more work because it's first in line and it's getting all of those transients. After those transients were tamed, the tube comp actually was able to round out the sound a little more and not have to react and try and catch up to those transients coming in. Lead vocals aren't the only thing that benefit from using serial compression. You could also use it on your drums where you can do a little bit more of a faster transient kind of compression on the shells themselves and doing a slower compression on the drum bus. There's lots of different things that you could do and make sure to experiment yourself to find out what you like. Because you're working in a DAW, you're only limited to the processing power of your machine to dictate how many compressors you can put in serial to get the sound that you're going for. Experiment with your material and let me know in the comments what you thought was the best approach, using one compressor, using parallel compression, or using serial compression. That's all for now. If you found this video informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timplansbomb.com. And if you have a question, ask it in a comment and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.